Lesson 6 Abraham's Seed Sabbath Afternoon May 1 Through his people Israel, God designed to give to the world a knowledge of his will, his promises and threatenings, his instructions and reproofs, the wonderful manifestations of his power among them in blessings for obedience and judgment for transgression and apostasy, all were designed for the education and development of religious principle among the people of God until the close of time. Therefore, it is important that we acquaint ourselves with the history of the Hebrew host and ponder with care the dealings of God with them. The words which God spoke to Israel by his Son were spoken for us also in these last days. The same Jesus who, upon the mount, taught his disciples the far-reaching principles of the law of God, instructed ancient Israel from the cloudy pillar and from the tabernacle by the mouth of Moses and Joshua. Religion in the days of Moses and Joshua was the same as religion today. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 2, page 994. The Church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service, and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning, it has been God's plan that through His Church shall be reflected to the world His fullness and His sufficiency. The members of the Church, those whom He has called out of darkness into His marvelous light, are to show forth His glory. The Church is the repository of the riches of the grace of Christ, and through the Church will eventually be made manifest, even to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, the final and full display of the love of God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. The Acts of the Apostles, page 9. I was shown many things concerning the people of God in connection with His work for these last days. I saw that many professed Sabbath keepers will come short of everlasting life. They fail to take warning from the course pursued by the children of Israel and fall into some of their evil ways. If they continue in these sins, they will fall like the Israelites and never enter the heavenly Canaan. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 533. We are in constant danger of becoming self-sufficient, relying upon our own wisdom, and not making God our strength. Nothing disturbs Satan so much as our not being ignorant of his devices. If we feel our dangers, we shall feel the need of prayer, as did Nehemiah, and like him, we shall obtain that sure defense that will give us security in peril. If we are careless and indifferent, we shall surely be overcome by Satan's devices. We must be vigilant. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 3, page 1138. Sunday, May 2 Above All People through the chosen nation, God had purposed to bring blessing to all mankind. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts, the prophet declared, is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7. To this people were committed the oracles of God. They were hedged about by the precepts of his law, the everlasting principles of truth, justice, and purity. Obedience to these principles was to be their protection, for it would save them from destroying themselves by sinful practices. And as the tower in the vineyard, God placed in the midst of the land His holy temple. It was God's purpose that by the revelation of His character through Israel, men should be drawn unto Him. To all the world the gospel invitation was to be given. Through the teaching of the sacrificial service, Christ was to be uplifted before the nations, and all who would look unto him should live. All who, like Rahab the Canaanite and Ruth the Moabitess, 
turned from idolatry to the worship of the true God, were to unite themselves with his chosen people. As the numbers of Israel increased, they were to enlarge their borders until their kingdom should embrace the world. Prophets and Kings, pages 17 to 19. In all the dealings of God with his people, there is mingled with his love and mercy the most striking evidence of his strict and impartial justice. This is exemplified in the history of the Hebrew people. God had bestowed great blessings upon Israel. His loving kindness toward them is touchingly portrayed. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him. And yet what swift and severe retribution was visited upon them for their transgressions. The infinite love of God has been manifested in the gift of his only begotten Son to redeem a lost race. Christ came to the earth to reveal to men the character of his Father, and his life was filled with deeds of divine tenderness and compassion. And yet Christ himself declares, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 Patriarchs and Prophets Page 469 He whose mind is enlightened by the opening of God's word to his understanding will realize his responsibility to God and to the world, and he will feel that his talents must be developed in a way that will produce the very best results. For he is to show forth the praises of him who has called him out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 while growing in grace and in a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will realize his own imperfections, he will feel his real ignorance, and he will seek constantly to preserve and put to the stretch his powers of mind that he may become an intelligent Christian. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 37. Monday, May 3. Land Deal. Joseph outlived his father 54 years. He witnessed the increase and prosperity of his people, and through all the years his faith in God's restoration of Israel to the land of promise was unshaken. When he saw that his end was near, he summoned his kinsmen about him. Honored as he had been in the land of the pharaohs, Egypt was to him but the place of his exile. His last act was to signify that his lot was cast with Israel. His last words were, God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And he took a solemn oath of the children of Israel that they would carry up his bones with them to the land of Canaan. And through the centuries of toil which followed the coffin, a reminder of the dying words of Joseph testified to Israel that they were only sojourners in Egypt and bade them keep their hopes fixed upon the land of promise for the time of deliverance would surely come. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 240. The Israelites fixed their hopes upon worldly greatness. From the time of their entrance to the land of Canaan, they departed from the commandments of God and followed the ways of the heathen. It was in vain that God sent them warning by his prophets. In vain they suffered the chastisement of heathen oppression. Every reformation was followed by deeper apostasy. Had Israel been true to God, he could have accomplished his purpose through their honor and exaltation. If they had walked in the ways of obedience, he would have made them high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor. All people of the earth, said Moses, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. The nations which shall hear all these statutes shall say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 19 and chapter 28 verse 10 and Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. The Desire of Ages, page 28. Heaven may be attained by all who will comply with the conditions laid down in the word of God. Our Redeemer was obedient unto death. He gave himself an offering for sin. 
ye are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish. The precious blood of Jesus is the fountain prepared to cleanse the soul from the defilement of sin. When you determine to take him as your friend, a new and enduring light will shine from the cross of Christ. A true sense of the sacrifice and intercession of the dear Savior will break the heart that has become hardened in sin, and love, thankfulness, and humility will come into the soul. The surrender of the heart to Jesus subdues the rebel into a penitent, and then the language of the obedient soul is, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 625. Tuesday, May 4. Israel and the Covenant. The unfaithfulness of the Church to Christ in permitting her confidence and affection to be turned from Him and allowing the love of worldly things to occupy the soul is likened to the violation of the marriage vow. The sin of Israel in departing from the Lord is presented under this figure, and the wonderful love of God which they thus despised is touchingly portrayed, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee. But thou didst turn in thine own beauty, and playedest the harlot because of thy renown. As a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 8, 13 to 15 and 32, and Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20. The Great Controversy, page 381. If we would come into possession of the heavenly inheritance, the glorious eternal substance, we must be in covenant relation with God. God's people must be a peculiar holy people, distinct in character and practice from the world, distinguished from all the religionists of the day. They must be patterns in personal piety and good works. There is higher, holier work for us to do than we have yet done. Christ has said, My kingdom is not of this world. It has no principles that will meet the principles of the world. The Lord has set His church as a light in the world to guide the world to heaven. It is to be a part of heaven on the earth, flashing divine light on the pathway of benighted souls. You are a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to men. God's people should now receive the light and diffuse it. They need not try to shine. If their hearts are enlightened by Christ, they cannot help shining. The brightness will appear. Every true disciple will reveal Christ to the world as the sin-pardoning Savior. The Faith I Live By, page 304. With untold love, our God has loved us, and our love awakens toward Him as we comprehend something of the length and breadth and depth and height of this love that passeth knowledge. By the revelation of the attractive loveliness of Christ, by the knowledge of His love expressed to us while we were yet sinners, the stubborn heart is melted and subdued, and the sinner is transformed and becomes a child of heaven. God does not employ compulsory measures. Love is the agent which he uses to expel sin from the heart. By it, he changes pride into humility and enmity and unbelief into love and faith. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 76. Wednesday, May 5. The Remnant The Savior's prophecy concerning the visitation of judgments upon Jerusalem is to have another fulfillment of which that terrible desolation was but a faint shadow. In the fate of the chosen city we may behold the doom of a world that has rejected God's mercy and trampled upon His law. But, 
What are these, in contrast with the terrors of that day, when the restraining spirit of God shall be wholly withdrawn from the wicked, no longer to hold in check the outburst of human passion and satanic wrath? The world will then behold, as never before, the results of Satan's rule. But in that day, as in the time of Jerusalem's destruction, God's people will be delivered, everyone that shall be found written among the living. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 3. Christ has declared that he will come the second time to gather his faithful ones to himself. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 and 31. The Great Controversy, pages 36 and 37. In the courts above, Christ is pleading for his church, pleading for those for whom he has paid the redemption price of his blood. Centuries, ages, can never lessen the efficacy of his atoning sacrifice. Neither life nor death, height nor depth, can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Not because we hold him so firmly, but because he holds us so fast. If our salvation depended on our own efforts, we could not be saved. But it depends on the one who is behind all the promises. Our grasp on him may seem feeble, but his love is that of an elder brother. So long as we maintain our union with him, no one can pluck us out of his hand. Oh, how privileged we are that we may come to Jesus just as we are and cast ourselves upon his love. We have no hope but in Jesus. He alone can reach us with his hand to lift us up out of the depths of discouragement and hopelessness and place our feet upon the rock. Although the human soul may cling to Jesus with all the desperate sense of his great need, Jesus will cling to the souls bought by his own blood with a firmer grasp than the sinner clings to him. That I May Know Him, page 80 Have faith in God. However stormy may be the times, looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith, you will be complete in him. Abide in the old paths, whoever may turn back. Be rooted and grounded and built up in the most holy faith, a living epistle known and read of all men. That I May Know Him, page 212. Thursday, May 6. Spiritual Israel The church is God's fortress, his city of refuge, which he holds in a revolted world. Any betrayal of the church is treachery to him who has bought mankind with the blood of his only begotten Son. From the beginning, faithful souls have constituted the church on earth. In every age the Lord has had his watchmen, who have borne a faithful testimony to the generation in which they lived. These sentinels gave the message of warning, and when they were called to lay off their armor, others took up the work. God brought these witnesses into covenant relation with himself, uniting the church on earth with the church in heaven. He has sent forth his angels to minister to his church, and the gates of hell have not been able to prevail against his people. Through centuries of persecution, conflict, and darkness, God has sustained his church. Not one cloud has fallen upon it that he has not prepared for. Not one opposing force has risen to counterwork his work that he has not foreseen. All has taken place as he predicted. He has not left his church forsaken, but has traced in prophetic declarations what would occur, and that which his spirit inspired the prophets to foretell has been brought about. All his purposes will be fulfilled. His law is linked with his throne, and no power of evil can destroy it. Truth is inspired and guarded by God and it will triumph over all opposition. The Acts of the Apostles, page 11 The purpose which God seeks to accomplish through His people today is the same that He desired to accomplish through Israel when He brought them forth out of Egypt. By beholding the goodness, the mercy, the justice, and the love of God revealed in the Church, the world is to have a representation of His character. 
and when the law of God is thus exemplified in the life, even the world will recognize the superiority of those who love and fear and serve God above every other people on the earth. The Lord has His eye upon every one of His people. He has His plans concerning each. It is His purpose that those who practice His holy precepts shall be a distinguished people. To the people of God today as well as to ancient Israel belong the words written by Moses through the spirit of inspiration. Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, page 12. The Israel of God today, the representatives of heaven that make up the true Church of Christ, must be strong, for upon them devolves the task of finishing the work that has been committed to man, and of ushering in the day of final awards. Yet the same influences that prevailed against Israel in the time when Solomon reigned are to be met with still. The forces of the enemy of all righteousness are strongly entrenched, only by the power of God can the victory be gained. Prophets and Kings, page 74. For further reading, Faith and Works, What God Requires, page 52. And Prophets and Kings, The House of Israel, pages 703 to 721.